Although most fans of A Song of Ice and Fire and Game of Thrones understandably aren't keen on revisiting the sloppy final season of the TV series, season 8 of the show is actually home to some of the most interesting indications of where the book series may or may not be going. Season 8 was largely so confusing because the series was attempting to get across the finish line as fast as possible. But many of the messier aspects of the show were also clearly driven by the fact that Game of Thrones had already significantly deviated from the story that George R.R. R. Martin was trying to tell. So, when the time came for the TV series to end, the show had to push its characters into their decided endgames despite the fact that many alterations to their prior arcs now made those endings somewhat nonsensical. George has already directly stated that the broad strokes of the ending will be the same in the books, but I think it stands to reason that the most controversial aspect of the series' end, Daenerys' decision to burn King's Landing, will likely be significantly different within the books. There are a lot of theories about how Danny's dark, or at least darker, turn is going to go in the novels. Many fans, unsurprisingly, have come up with speculations that alleviate most of Danny's responsibility for the destruction of the city, but I think the notion that someone else will burn King's Landing, or that Daenerys will burn the capital by accident, are extremely unlikely. I can't envision a world where George R.R. R. Martin lets any of his main characters off the hook for the most destructive choice in the entire series. And frankly, it has always been completely in character for Daenerys to justify any amount of devastation and destruction if it's in service of reclaiming the Iron Throne. And honestly, despite the fact that Game of Thrones retconned most of Danny's darkest book decisions and characteristics, even within the TV series itself, Burning King's Landing was largely a logical extension of Danny's habit of killing anybody who gives even the slightest indication that they might not follow her. However, it also seems undeniable that the burning of King's Landing is almost certainly going to come about due to different circumstances. And, it seems extremely likely that the omission of one significant character in the books, Young Griff, will be one of the key differences in the destruction of King's Landing in the entire Targaryen dynasty. While I don't think Young Griff's non-Targaryen heritage is nearly as undeniable as many other fans do, one thing that seems very probable is that regardless of whether or not Aegon is really Aegon Targaryen, Daenerys will not believe that he's the long-lost son of Rhaegar Targaryen. Cersei becoming Danny's greatest rival never really made sense considering how few legitimate supporters she had. But on the other hand, someone like young Griff, who has spent his entire life training to become the best king possible, seems like the kind of person who will likely win at least a significant amount of support among the lords of Westeros, and the common people, who at this point would honestly prefer anyone other than Cersei anyway. But, if Danny arrives in Westeros and there is a Targaryen who she doesn't believe is a Targaryen already sitting on the Iron Throne with the backing of a multitude of kingdoms as well as the common people, clearly she's going to be pissed. And obviously, she's going to have a huge axe to grind with the boy who she believes has usurped her throne. Danny has always been prone to violence to begin with, but now that she seems to have decided to go full fire and blood, it's not that difficult to figure out how she is likely going to handle Aegon VI. But, I think that the penultimate episode of Game of Thrones may have already explained exactly how that's going to happen. Like most fans, as soon as any information about the final season of Game of Thrones was released, I thought about what it could possibly be referring to or what it would mean. And one aspect of season 8 that seemed to not quite fit into anything within the rest of the series was the title of the episode, The Bells. What initially interested me about that name was that not only was it the title for arguably the most important episode in the entire show, but that it referred to something that has a lot of thematic relevance within the books, but that has been barely mentioned within the TV series. Bells are mentioned constantly in A Song of Ice and Fire, but they've only gotten a few nods within Game of Thrones. And I was even more surprised that, 
when the show actually aired, the ringing of the bells didn't seem to be hugely relevant to the episode itself either. Yes, the bells do seem to trigger Danny's decision to burn the entire city down, but they aren't important before or after that. And when there are so many possible titles that are more connected to the series and the story, it still seems strange that The Bells was called The Bells. However, while bells are a bit of a perennial theme within A Song of Ice and Fire, I think one particular bell-themed subplot might be the exact history that's going to repeat itself when King's Landing burns to the ground. And I think that Daenerys might defeat Aegon in the Second Battle of the Bells. John Connington is another fantastic character who was completely omitted from the TV series, but it's interesting that the most fervent supporter of House Targaryen, who was on the front lines fighting for Rhaegar in Robert's Rebellion, seems to believe that the war wasn't actually lost in the Trident, but in Stony Sept when John failed to root out Robert Baratheon. John Con's perspective on Rhaegar and on the entire war is undeniably warped. And in retrospect, House Targaryen's dynasty was always destined to fail. Rhaegar may not have had the violent impulses of Aerys, but a dude who lets the entire realm devolve into chaos because he really needs to impregnate a teenager who is dubiously consenting at best, was not going to bring peace and prosperity back to the realm. And in a broader sense, the Targaryen values of isolationism, superiority, subjugation, and consolidation of power seem to indicate that no matter what happened, as long as the Targaryens stuck to their beliefs, then they were never going to hold on to the Seven Kingdoms. But still, it seems incredibly important that John Connington believed that the Targaryens lost the Iron Throne in the Battle of the Bells. And it's even more important that he's almost certainly wrong. A Song of Ice and Fire has been pretty consistent in its portrayal of brutality. It is proven to be an effective tool in the short term, but it seems to have disastrous results in the long run. And, given that George R. R. Martin is an ardent pacifist, it's obvious that John Conn's belief that if only he had been crueler and more violent in Stony Sept, then the war would have been won for House Targaryen, is a belief that's bound to be undermined. The fact that Prince Aegon's greatest Westerosi supporter is so strong in this belief, though, seems to be an obvious setup for a clash in the future. It seems unlikely that the boy who Varys wanted to be the perfect king would be as brutal as someone like Tywin Lannister. And honestly, most people are not that violent, nor do they believe that the only goal is winning, no matter the cost. But it also seems to be a setup for a clash between young Griff and Daenerys. After all, while most people wouldn't do absolutely anything to get what they believed was their birthright, Danny absolutely would. She internally justifies every action that she takes in service of getting the Iron Throne, and there doesn't seem to be a limit to the violence that she would excuse if it meant taking what she believes is rightfully hers. The descriptions of the Battle of the Bells in John Connington's POV chapters are all very interesting. And it's telling that even in these few glimpses into his mind, this battle is so vitally important. But John's memories are at their most interesting in the chapter The Griffin Reborn, when he discusses his failings with Miles Toyne. John tells himself that even Tywin Lannister couldn't have done anything more than what he did, but Toyne disagrees. Blackheart says, Lord Tywin would not have bothered with a search. He would have burned that town and every living creature in it. Men and boys, babes at the breast, noble knights and holy septons, pigs and whores, rats and rebels, he would have burned them all. When the fires guttered out and only ash and cinders remained, he would have sent his men in to find the bones of Robert Baratheon. And while Miles is undoubtedly right that this is exactly what Tywin Lannister would have done, the particular description of the violence sounds undeniably Targaryen in nature. It literally sounds like fire and blood. And frankly, it sounds pretty close to what Daenerys did in Game of Thrones and is likely to do in King's Landing in A Song of Ice and Fire. Conceptually, it's actually quite simple. 
John Connington will fight the Battle of the Bells once again. Except this time he's going to be on the side of the new Robert Baratheon. If young Griff is a remotely capable ruler who wins the hearts of the people, then it's entirely believable that the citizens of King's Landing would give him quarter when the Dragon Queen comes looking for him. And given Daenerys' typical patience level, it seems incredibly likely that Danny would just burn the traitors and find the bones of the usurper in the ashes. John Connington has returned to Westeros, operating under the belief that he's going to have to be tougher and more brutal to ensure that young Griff ascends to the Iron Throne like Rhaegar never did. And to ensure that he's never overthrown like the Mad King was. So then... It would be a pretty perfect twist of fate if everything that John believes now winds up being proven wrong, and he finds himself in the boy who he has vowed to defend to his last breath, relying on the kindness of strangers to hide them from the Targaryen ruler and her armies who are searching for them. And ironically, John will not do what he has set out to do, succeed for the son where he failed for the father, Precisely because the enemy that he's facing now will be ready and willing to use the brutality that John Khan originally shied away from in Stony Sept. If young Griff and the elder Griffin were actually dealing with a rival who was similar to the younger John Connington, someone who wasn't willing to wreak havoc and destruction in order to find their enemy at all costs, then they might have had a chance at at least surviving. But... Because Danny is the type of person who serves up fire and blood to anyone she thinks even might be her enemy, any of King Aegon's protectors will be treated with the brutality that John currently believes is necessary to win. And young Griff will be killed anyway. And of course, while Daenerys will almost certainly win the battle against Aegon VI, her decision to be as violent and swift as possible in order to root out her enemies will also lead to her ultimate downfall and a truly irrevocable end to the Targaryen dynasty. Thematically, the repetition of past mistakes, the false belief that great violence in service of a supposedly greater good is worthwhile, and the false belief that brutality is strength, all fits well with A Song of Ice and Fire and George R. R. Martin's political point of view. But obviously, given that Aegon Targaryen, John Connington, and their entire branch of the story was omitted in Game of Thrones, none of this could have ever happened in the TV series. And perhaps the title of the penultimate episode was a subtle nod to the climax that the writers know will be coming in the books. But what do you think? Could Danny's ultimate destruction of King's Landing actually be the second Battle of the Bells? Will John Connington's belief in ruthlessness be disproven in the most brutal way possible? Leave your comments and opinions below. And if you're interested in more content like this, like and subscribe.